Robert and I are in Buffalo, New York at Buffalo State College, which has a highly renowned art conservation program. We'd like to introduce you to James Hamm. James has been an important teacher and mentor to students in the art conservation program since 1986. Here at Buffalo State College, we've been using the pigment and wax resin film material for many years. It's developed primarily to make filling easier on paintings and neater. Um, unfortunately, one of the key ingredients is no longer available. So in 2011, uh, Christine McIntyre expressed interest in exploring possibilities of uh, introducing a new material or discovering a new material that would um, equal or be better than what was used before. <clears throat> so the um, outcome of that has resulted in a material that we're really happy to use and it's now being made by Gamblin Artist Colors. A small dental tool is really a versatile instrument because not only do you lay the pigment and wax resin down but you can smooth it, tool it, trim it, and effectively sculpt it. James will be using a Leister hot air gun to heat the dental tools. He recently acquired a whip mix carving pencil which is demonstrated on our video Introduction to Working with PWR. At some points in this video you will hear a machine noise. That is the Leister blowing hot air. A bamboo skewer is an ideal tool to work and remove excess PWR from the fill since bamboo is softer than the paint surface. To keep the tip working at its best, the wax needs to be repeatedly removed by sanding or refreshing the tip on the sandpaper. Before beginning the pigmented wax resin fill, it's important to support the canvas with some uh, pieces of plywood or blocks. In this first segment, James will demonstrate filling narrow cracks. The yellow ochre stick seemed to work best on this face because it's fleshy color uh, and lighter than the surrounding area so it will be sure that it will cover the dark underpainting as well as approximate the, uh, the flesh color. The fresh sticks need to be shaped into a point using a, um, a pencil sharpener with a large opening. To fill narrow cracks that are dark in a light area such as the face uh, another use of the dental tool is to warm it up further, melt the wax, the PWR, and um, let it run off as a more of a liquid into that narrow crack. Something important to remember is to do all this work with a raking light because subtle texture is emphasized and you can do um, more uh, accurate filling that way. Benefit of using the pigmented wax resin fill is really threefold. Um, the first is that it's neat and that you can apply it almost exclusively to the loss and not get it on the uh, surrounding area of paint. And that's a great advantage in terms of saving time as well as not having to pick up excess material. And second, the texturing capability of the pigment and wax resin is um, really second to none, um, so that impasto can be replicated. And thirdly, the toning of the fill is really critical for certain kinds of ink painting, where the underlayer is playing a role, but not exclusively. So the wax, the PWR, is put into the crack using the dental tool on the on its edge and the, it leaves a, a ridge of uh, material which needs to be shaved level um, with the paint and then once that's achieved the texturing can occur. bamboo skewer can be used also to level the fill, um, lightly 
scraping across from one side to the other. Now it looks like I need to add a little more. Mm -hmm. James describes his introduction to wax resin fills. One of my students had actually studied in Germany um, like 25 years ago. A student from about 25 years ago. She had seen them use wax resin for fills. Uh -huh. And uh, so we played around with it a little bit and I've been playing around with it ever since just kind of yeah. deciding what you know, you can do with it, and um, there wasn't a formula exactly. I don't even remember what we were using, but um, I just thought, yeah, that, that's neat. We could do that. So the texturing, again, using the dental tool, the the. Um, Fills can be textured to um, mimic uh, finer cracks and other undulations in the paint surface. So I'm using the dental tool to just finish off the surface, make sure it's uh, level, um, and then taking the sharpened bamboo skewer to detail it. PWR should always be applied over a varnish, so the painting is usually varnished entirely before doing this. In this process, I scratch the varnish just a little bit, and it can be reformed with a odorless mineral spirits. That's what. Here's a before and after of the fill James completed. The fill is now ready for in-painting with Gamblin Conservation Colors. In this segment, James will demonstrate creating a fill with impasto. Choosing a sky color, it could be done with either a white, a pale blue, or a light gray. Any neutral, slightly lighter color would work fine. For this fill, James has decided to use mid-value gray. Yeah, so it'll show up and it'll still be workable, uh -huh. painting-wise. As shown before, the PWR stick needs to be sharpened to a, an acceptable point relative to the size of the loss. Once the PWR stick has been sharpened, it can be further um, adjusted by warming the tip and rolling it in your fingers to uh, sharpen the tip or extend the tip for smaller losses. In this case, because of the thickness of the paint, the PWR has to be applied in layers and uh, using the larger dental tool. For the small details in this fill, I've switched back to the smaller dental tool and a finer tip on the PWR stick. Filling an area of impasto like this, it's important to realize that you'll have to put in layers of the PWR rather than doing it all in one fell swoop. Also, it's important that there be a varnish applied first. This painting isn't varnished overall, so the varnish was applied just in the area of the loss. to decide what we want this painting to look like here. Um, I can add some brushwork here. Maybe with a bigger 
bigger one. It's so forgiving, this picture, because it's turbulent brush strokes that anything that looks about right is probably okay. <laughs> To finish up, I'm using the sharpened bamboo skewer. Don't forget to refresh the tip on the sandpaper. Here's a before and after of the fill James completed. James will demonstrate filling traction cracks. It's important to choose a color that is usually a little bit lighter than the area that you're intending to fill. So it helps that we're not using white lead or uh, orpiment or something. <laughs> Filling a narrow traction crack requires the fine point of the PWR stick to be pressed with a worn dental tool into the gap. So the process just continues repeating in this way. Running the tool, pressing the wax into place, the pigment and wax resin, and tooling it, uh, shaping it to keep it, while it's still warm, to keep it from um, spreading. If I um, want to continue a crack, I can go like that. Any of the PWR that accidentally is on top of the paint surrounding the loss can be scraped away using a sharpened bamboo skewer.